pattern. What I'm concerned about that all the leaders of this parish come together and understand that the reality exists, that there's tremendous, pre tremendous pressure in the city right now. And if you, if you work tirelessly trying to deal with the issue in the city, uh, you know, and you put so much pressure on the trash that's there, it's going to run somewhere else. That, that's without a doubt. The difference between what I see, and this is from my personal perspective, the difference between what I see, um, for some reason, New Orleans chooses to coddle people in, 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 or criminals in that area that, um, you know, that, that tend to get away with a great deal. We will not call that trash in St. Tammany Parish. If they come to St. Tammany Parish, we're going to pursue them, we're going to arrest them, our prosecutors are going to prosecute them, and our judges are going to convict them. Now, I, you know, I, I don't get into calling people names and all of that fact, but if you're going to walk the streets of St. Tammany Parish with dreadlocks and chiwi hairstyles, then you can expect to be getting a visit from a sheriff's deputy. We would rather you come be a working, taxpaying citizen of this parish and contribute to what makes this parish great. If you believe you're going to come over here and you're going to take advantage of our residents, then you're wrong. We're going to deal with you one way or the other. And it's not our intent to violate anyone's civil rights. We never intend to do that. But you can guarantee that things that you got away with in the city will not be tolerated in this parish. And I, I know you have some slick lawyers on both sides of the lake who make tremendous living off of getting these people out of jail. Well, we've proven in this parish that it's a pretty difficult challenge for them to make a good living, defense attorneys that is. My personal opinion is that's the first people we should put on the rail and get out of here. You know, there, there's, there's a lot going on in the city that will affect St. Tammany Parish that my residents need to be aware of today. The destruction of all the housing projects. These people will not live on the street. The federal government's going to find somewhere for them to live. I don't want to see temporary housing, uh, uh, because of Katrina, turn into long-term housing for a bunch of thugs and trash that don't need to be in St. Tammany Parish. So it, that's something that we need to be aware of today, and all leaders need to be vigilant and ob observant to see what's going on. We don't want to wake up one day and find out that New Orleans has been damn successful at running all of the, the trash out of the city, and it ended up roosting in St. Tammany. That, we, we don't need to put our head in the sand, I guess, is the best explanation I have. Am I frustrated? No question about it. I'm aggravated that, that the, re, uh, the regional approach that I've said since before the, the Guard went into the city was not understood. We learned during Katrina when the state fails to come in and help, it makes our job a hell of a lot harder. We learn when the federal government doesn't come in, it makes our job more difficult. The governor now is saying to the federal government, give us our fair share of oil royalties. I'm telling the governor, give us our fair share of sales taxes, hire more state police, put in this parish, and let them help this team keep this parish safe. Who? Jack Strain. Say it ain't so. The videotape you just saw was um, from a press conference after Hurricane Katrina, where... um ex-racist ex police chief Jack Strain uh, was giving a press conference and the press conference speaks for itself but that particular conference really wasn't like uh, and that was 2006 I think if I, I can recall and what had happened was um, history behind that particular uh, press conference you just saw was that um, a lot of New Orleans like 80% of New Orleans had got flooded so when FEMA had FEMA trailers the North Shore, which was um, Covington, St. Tammany Parish, didn't flood. That's like the rich area, like real, that's Trump country. And, um, but that's the story for another day. He got arrested for rape charges. He had been, he had been molesting one of his, uh, a relative of his. They won't, they won't give any information on who the victim is, if it's a relative, um, a, a cousin or, or what have you, but let me tell you something, bro. St. Tammany Parish ain't nothing to fuck with. And uh, that's good for his ass, bro. What goes around comes all the way back around. St. Tammany is so bad that other courthouses around the state, and mind you, Louisiana is a red state, other courthouses called St. Tammany, St. Slamany. They had a dude who got life in prison, my nigga, for a bag of weed. It was like, um... And I'm trying not to give y'all like a fake story. I think this is like his third possession. <laughs> and that don't make it any better. But I'm saying they had told him, look here, bro. You are in racist ass St. Tammany Parish as a black dude with a bag of herb. Get the fuck out of here. I'm telling you. 
my friend Belinda, there was a, a situation where Jack Strain, we protested. I was one of the protesters. As a matter of fact, when I used to do that dumb shit, I was one of the protesters. WBOK it was a black radio station down here called, it, it, not, it, not, not that there was, there still is a black radio station called WBOK. Talking back, talking black. And it was uh, a guy named Paul Boyer and John Slade would uh, have certain guests on there. And it was a black woman who lived in St. Tammany Parish, kind of upscale black woman. One of them, like, uh, Black Lives Matter, Cliff Huxtable kind of black woman. And she was, um, her son was a minister. And Jack Strain, I forgot how it got out, but former Sheriff Jack Strain was involved with pass him and his police chiefs. Got some kind of way they got revealed. They was passing racist jokes through some emails. And the emails got out. And the group we was all supposed to go to the courthouse and protest about, you know, how they was just like making fun of people. They'll pull your pants down, degrade all the inmates. And most of the black inmates got it the worst. Um, I mean, you would get like literally six months in jail for like fussing at your girlfriend and even uh, one of my friends as a matter of fact was just staying literally just staying at a hotel and it was playing with super soakers off the interstate and if you go on the slidell um i would say st tammany parish is basically 45 minutes from new orleans if you're going to mississippi but they got like really nice hotels over there and uh, one of my friends was playing, playing with a super soaker. And, of course, his girlfriend was making more noise than necessary. He was getting the best of her. And they said that he was abusing her with a super soaker gun and tried to give him a, a domestic violence charge. But, of course, it got dropped because, you know, the judge was like, nah, bro, it's just some, some niggas having fun. You know, and no big deal. I was shocked that that judge let that slide. At the same time, and even the judges are just as racist as the, pol as the police, which is why they got the, the nickname St. Slam in a Parish. But this particular guy, Jack Strain, has always been at the forefront of racist, racist shit with illegal aliens. They had like the fucking Home Depot. Man, it was arresting regular dudes in Home Depot. They were like light skinned Creole black dudes. It was like, nah, you're Mexican. He's like, nah, bro, I'm a black guy. I'm just Creole. I'm light skinned. I can pass, you know, like for a Mexican dude. And it was, it's, just, it was just, it's wild, bro. It's a really wild time over there. And um, it's weird because. St. Tammany Parish now is filled to the rim with crystal meth and Xanax. You can go to like a gas station at, let's say, 10 o'clock at night. The ones that's not owned by Arabic dudes, you have like these middle-aged white ladies, you know, um, and they be just like ducking out like fucking Xanax, like half of St. Tammany Parish. And the odd thing about it, they act like they're better than everybody. Now, Mandeville is where uh, I think our the the uh, coach of the Saints, um, Sean Payton, Mandeville is the money. It's still considered the North Shore, but it's not St. Tammany Parish. Across the lake, is, is I'm telling you, when Trump was over there, that's where Trump got all his donations from. And I, I was when I went to that um, particular protest, I um, got sidetracked off earlier. Um, that protest, the police, that the woman's son is a minister, 26-year-old dude. And he was videotaping the protest. They arrested him. And it was laughing and giggling the whole fucking time. So those, those cops didn't give a fuck that we was there protesting. That we had cell phones. Jack Strain was like, fuck them niggas. You know, put them all in jail. And there was, and it had a certain, like, uh, like a little chalk line. They were saying, yeah, y'all can protest. Just don't cross that chalk line. And one dude kind of like, you know, other protesters kind of like elbowed him. And he kind of like staggered across the, across the line. Boy, they snatched his ass so fast. And took his camera and threw it on the ground and gave him probation for six months just for, for tripping. And it made it seem like he ran towards the cops. I was there. I watched the whole thing happen. So he was also involved in something called squirrel cage. And this is some, some dastardly shit. And I, I, don't, I want that piece of shit to get life, bro. Fuck that nigga. I, I can't stand Jack Strain. He a racist motherfucker, bro. He, uh, I think he even was one, one, like like a Donald, a Donald Duke. Um, what is this fucking man? David Duke uh, supporter. He um they had these cages. He was trying to he was trying to outdo Joseph Arpaio in Arizona. He had these cages, bruh. And we was we was also protesting the cages. If you was like a drunk person, a mentally ill person, it was it was locking you in cages. Three by three foot cages called squirrel cages. 
and as a punishment for the dude who protest who was videotaping the cops during the protest they put her son and i think that she might be winning a lawsuit against that soon and um but yeah bro so that, that that's just what's going on bro a lot of people don't really understand how racist new orleans is and St. Tammany is not really considered New Orleans, but it's considered part of the greater New Orleans area. It's almost like um, if you live in L.A., whatever like the city outside of L.A. is considered, it's considered greater Los Angeles. It's not, it may not be considered part of, of the municipality that is Los Angeles, but if you drive into work, a lot of folks who live on the North Shore, they drive into work in New Orleans. So they bring all that racist shit with them to their job. And then they bring it right back to their house and get on Facebook and complain. So anyway, guys, that, that's just what's going on down here, bro. Fuck that dude. That dude a piece of shit. And after Katrina, it was so many people who needed somewhere to stay and somewhere to go. And every parish outside of New Orleans was like, man, don't bring that nigga trash here. Keep, the, keep all of the project welfare people where they belong. And, you know, they was using what happened in the Superdome. As an example, let's say, oh, the niggas tore the Superdome to pieces, but the Superdome was never ever, um, uh, I got, what's, what's the legal term? Um, shelter of last resort or something like that, something of last resort. And, um, the Superdome was just like, well, you know, the convention center was full, and they say, well, use the Superdome next. And of course, some ignorant niggas, you know, got out of control, you know, because, you know, there was no tampons, and they run out of toilet paper, and, and the, you know, the city just really handled the evacuation badly. And it was like, well, look at it. Look how they did the Superdome. Fuck all that. Then there's the parish called Chalmette. Chalmette is literally next door to New Orleans. Chalmette was like, hell no. Chalmette was so racist at the time, after Katrina, they had a better a solution. That's my neighbor rapping. Look, look. The dude with the violetis guy behind me, he he riding up and down the street, rapping his ass off. But he'll never tell me what the fuck he listening to because whatever it is, he be like really into it. But no, um, Chalmette is so wild. They were saying that you can rent houses to people, but only if they're related to you. That loophole was basically to say that Chalmette is eighty percent white. Then obviously you can only rent to other white people. Or some kind of way is a dude named Junior Rodriguez. He he got kicked out of office too. But it, it's just a lot of wild shit down here in New Orleans. But y'all really not privy to, and it's just not this, this melting pot of love and gumbo and Mardi Gras like everybody else think it is, man. It, it, this is a fucking red state, and New Orleans ain't really blue, nigga. It's purple. Hit like, share, and subscribe. Holla back.